what if everything we thought we knew about treating blood clots was incomplete? Today, we're diving into the groundbreaking HIPRO trial from the New England Journal of Medicine that's challenging decades of clinical practice. I'm going to show you why this single study might completely change how we manage venous thromboembolism. Let's get started. For decades, VTE management has been beautifully simple. Unprovoked VTE, extend anticoagulation indefinitely. Simple provoked VTE, three months and you're done. But there's been this massive gray area that's been haunting clinicians. What do you do with patients who have provoked VTE, but also have enduring risk factors like obesity, chronic inflammatory diseases, or cardiovascular disease? Current guidelines from the American Heart Association, CHEST, and European Society of Cardiology essentially punt on this question. They don't provide clear recommendations for this commonly encountered clinical scenario. And that's exactly the evidence gap that the HIPRO investigators decided to tackle. Let's make sure we're all on the same page about VTE classification. Venous thromboembolism includes both deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Traditionally, we've classified these as either provoked, triggered by things like surgery, trauma, or immobility, or unprovoked, occurring without an obvious trigger. But here's where it gets interesting. Many patients with provoked VTE also have what we call enduring risk factors. Think about your typical post-surgical patient who's also obese, has chronic lung disease, or cardiovascular disease. These aren't temporary risk factors. They persist long after the surgery is done. And that's the population this trial focused on. So the million-dollar question the HIPRO investigators asked was this. Does extended duration of Pixaban for 12 months reduce recurrent VTE compared to placebo in patients with provoked VTE who also have enduring risk factors? This is brilliant because it moves beyond the traditional binary thinking of provoked versus unprovoked VTE. Instead, it recognizes that VTE risk exists on a spectrum, and maybe we need more nuanced approaches to anticoagulation duration. The HIPRO trial was a single-center, double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized trial. They enrolled 600 adults with objectively confirmed provoked VTE who had at least one enduring risk factor. The provoking factors included surgery, trauma, immobility, and acute medical illness. The enduring risk factors were obesity with BMI 30 or greater, chronic inflammatory diseases, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, and chronic lung disease. Patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive either low dose of Pixaban, 2.5 milligrams twice daily, or matching placebo for 12 months. And here's a key point. All patients had already completed at least three months of standard anticoagulation. The study population was pretty representative of what we see in clinical practice. Average age was about 60 years, 57% female, with a BMI of 30. About 49% had hypertension, 53% had dyslipidemia, and 12% had diabetes. However, and this is important for our critique later, 81% of patients were white and only 11% were black. This raises some questions about generalizability. Patients were randomized to receive either apixaban 2.5 milligrams twice daily or matching placebo with excellent adherence rates, median of 350 days in the apixaban group and 339 days in the placebo group. The primary efficacy outcome was symptomatic recurrent VTE at 12 months. The primary safety outcome was major bleeding according to the International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis Criteria. Secondary outcomes included a composite of cardiovascular death and other thrombotic events, as well as clinically relevant non-major bleeding. All endpoints were adjudicated by an independent committee in a blinded manner, which strengthens the study's credibility. And here's where the results get absolutely stunning. Symptomatic recurrent VTE occurred in only 1.3% of patients in the apixaban group compared to 10% in the placebo group. That's a hazard ratio of 0.13 with a p-value less than 0.001. Let's put this in perspective. That's an 87% relative risk reduction, an 8.7% absolute risk reduction, and a number needed to treat of just 12. These are the kind of results that make you sit up and take notice. The secondary composite outcomes also favored apixaban, with hazard ratios around 0.18 to 0.19 for various thrombotic endpoints. Now for the safety profile. Major bleeding occurred in only one patient in the apixaban group, 
that's 0.3%, and zero patients in the placebo group. No fatal bleeding occurred in either group. However, and this is crucial for clinical decision-making, clinically relevant non-major bleeding was higher in the apixaban group, 4.8% versus 1.7% in placebo. The hazard ratio was 2.68, though this didn't reach statistical significance with a p-value of 0.06. This bleeding signal is important because these events can significantly impact quality of life and healthcare costs, even if they're not life-threatening. Let's talk about what this study did really well. First, it addresses a critical evidence gap. This is literally the first randomized trial specifically designed for patients with provoked VTE and enduring risk factors. Second, the methodology is rock solid. They achieved 100% follow-up completion, used appropriate randomization and blinding, and had clear standardized outcome definitions. Third, the clinical effect is massive and highly significant. An 87% relative risk reduction with narrow confidence intervals, this isn't a marginal benefit we're debating. But every study has limitations, and HIPRO is no exception. The biggest concern is the single-center design. This was conducted entirely at Brigham and Women's Hospital, which limits generalizability to other healthcare systems and practice patterns. The trial also wasn't powered for bleeding outcomes, so we have uncertainty about the complete risk-benefit profile, especially that trend toward increased non-major bleeding. Additionally, while they included patients with diverse risk factors, the study wasn't designed to tell us which specific combinations of risk factors benefit most from extended anticoagulation. So we still can't give individualized guidance based on specific risk profiles. This study fundamentally challenges the traditional binary approach of provoked versus unprovoked VTE, and the results of this trial will likely change clinical practice. Current guidelines don't routinely recommend extended anticoagulation for provoked VTE, but this evidence may prompt reconsideration, particularly for patients with multiple enduring risk factors. The key insight is that we need more individualized risk assessment that goes beyond just asking whether the VTE was provoked or unprovoked. We need to consider the complete risk profile, including these persistent enduring factors. So here's the bottom line. Extended low-intensity apixaban significantly reduces VTE recurrence in high-risk, provoked VTE patients with an acceptable bleeding risk profile. But this raises important questions for our clinical practice. How do we identify these enduring risk factors in our day-to-day -day work? What patient factors should influence our decision to extend anticoagulation? As we move forward, we'll need larger multicenter studies, better risk stratification tools, and cost-effectiveness analyses to fully optimize this approach. But HIPRO represents a major step forward in personalizing VTE management. What do you think? Have you been seeing this population in your practice? How might this change your approach? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if this analysis was helpful, please like and subscribe for more evidence-based medicine content. Thanks for watching.